And we're getting together today to discuss uh, aerospace or the aviation sector of the electronics manufacturing services industry. Uh, the EMS industry has been serving what we've always called the mill aero sector uh, for many decades. So I wanted to speak to an EMS company who is doing work in this area. And we therefore invited uh, a representative from Zollner Electronics to join us today. Zona, for those who may not know, is a global EMS company, uh, the largest indigenous European EMS company, and I believe in 2019 we're ranked number 15 globally. Uh, and Zona has been engaged in this particular sector for, for quite a few years now. Um, joining us today from Zona, as you see on your screen, is Mr. Martin Eisenhardt. Martin is the Senior Vice President for the uh, Business Division Electronics uh, that includes the, uh, the uh, mill aero or the avionics sector that we'll be speaking about today. So Martin, welcome. Thank you for taking time and joining us today. It is a pleasure. Hey. To um, why don't we begin by me allowing you just to introduce yourself and your area of responsibility, what you do there with Zona. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Eric, for the introduction. It's a pleasure to talk to you today. Yeah, let me spend some words uh, for myself. So, yeah, as you said, Martin is not responsible for the military business here in Solna. I'm in Solna now the more than 20 years and uh, you know, started as a, as a quality manager for one of our plants. And at that time, we started also the aviation business, and I was responsible or in charge to, to let's say, to, to implement the quality management system um, for the aerospace in, in that uh, dedicated plant. And well, since 2012, I'm responsible for the business division and in that role, responsible for the global aerospace business in that sort the group. Okay. And so it's an interesting. Um sector to talk about because it certainly has been a challenging year for the industry uh, and everything that's going on. So how would you characterize kind of the current state of the uh, of the aerospace industry? Well, uh, for sure, it's a very interesting year for the aerospace. It's, uh, it's really, from my point of view, it's a game changer. So everything is talking about COVID-19 and uh, for sure, this is one of the biggest crises for the aerospace industry. If we look back over the last decades, so from my point of view, the aerospace industry is, um, has a strong growth the last couple of years. So it was just one direction growth, increasing business, continuous increasing business. And now, yeah, the COVID-19 crisis changed everything. So, if you read the news, you can easily see that the, the flights goes down of more than 50%. And uh, yeah, I think that's the situation the aerospace industry is facing now. And it will not be over next year. I think it will, it, yeah, it will continue the next couple of years. So if, mm -hmm. if we listen to the analysts, we see that maybe 2024, we are back to the pre-COVID situation. So, and, and this is basically, I think the biggest challenge now for the aerospace industry. Um, beside that, I think we have uh, some some other things to talk about because we have also new players in the market, not only the, the two big ones with A and B, let's say, mm -hmm. um, but also some new ones coming out of China, like Kumac and then maybe Mitsubishi out of Asia. This will also bring some news into the market because they are very innovative, they have new products and, and there is a lot of pressure, let me say, to, to start up that business with, with local companies. And then also the, the new technologies, everybody's talking about air taxis as a, as a new technology in the moment, unmanned aircrafts, all these, these kind of things, e-mobility, I think this is, this is a, this is the future of the aerospace. So there is a big change in the market from my perspective. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and with the air, with the, with the e-vehicle, the, the electronic one, 
We're also talking about the, um, uh, I mean, that has a direct impact on the emissions, right? So it's an emissions free thing. So a driving uh, issue behind that is certainly the environmental piece, correct? Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, as you said, zero emission is a, is a big word in, in, in the whole world. So not only in the aerospace, but, but also for other industries, but for sure an airplane is, <laughs> is not emission free yet today, right? So there is a lot of things to do to improve that situation and, and a lot of innovations are coming up to, to have yeah, more electric, I don't want to say all electric for bigger planes, but to support the, the, the current engine technologies with, with electronics or with electronic, electronic uh, motors and, and, and all these kind of things. This will be one big part for the future, for sure. And you were talking about how, how COVID certainly has been the big story this year, as it has been in all of our lives and across all sectors. But if we look beyond COVID, may, hopefully 2021 that begins, right? Um, yeah. what, what are the industry challenges then? What, are, you know, what were the challenges that the industry is facing uh, really from an EMS standpoint as well? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you say 2021, so for sure maybe there is a better situation and, and slowly the, the flights are going up, but from my standpoint, the, it, it's not over in the aerospace industry. There, is a, there was a change this year, so all the big OEMs, they, they adjusted their, their, and their volumes, their production rates, and, and this will last for some, some years now. And, the big challenge from, from an EMS standpoint is that we have the situation that the, the demand in the markets is, is maybe minus 40%. But on the other side, uh, beginning from the end customer, from the airlines, they're expecting price reduction. So this is, uh, there is a big gap. So mm -hmm. increased cost versus expectation of price reduction. This will be one of the major challenges uh, to for the next couple of years in the in, in the in the industry and, and especially on avionics. So we are talking about electronic products. We are talking about a lot of components on that products with a, with a low volume, which is not really yeah. I don't want to say that interesting for the semiconductor industry, but it's not really like an like a smartphone, right? So very right. complex product low volumes and uh, yeah I think it needs to be changed somehow there need to be some new designs I don't want to say new products but change designs some yeah some improvements necessary to to get to get down with the costs so it's not only negotiation it's, it's more really hard work mm -hmm. to get the products more competitive with the yeah. low quality um, and on the other side, um, also talking about the EMS, so a lot of a lot of manufacturers have, have high inventory levels, right? So because of this dramatic change in the demand, so this is uh, also a big challenge. Uh, we need to find a way out of that. How to how to yeah, yeah to use that up, right? So and mm -hmm. yeah, that that's. Probably the big challenges. So, and in, in your capacity as an EMS, then who you're engaging with is it the OEM? Is it the the tier one supplier to the to the OEM? Where where does an EMS like Zollner engage then? Usually, we are we are our customers are the tier one. So, because the OEMs is is not really the right one for us, the right fit, because we have no own IPs, we have no own products. Uh, right. Company, so we're a pure EMS company and we have not really an interest on online IPs. We want to support our customers, but we don't want to have competition with them. So basically, yes, it's the tier one supplier is our customer. Okay. And is there a distinction then uh, within the sector between, say, the military and the civilian aircraft? Is, is one more dominant or more? I would imagine that, you know, even with COVID, that the military... While civilian may be down the business, the military may still be. Fairly... No, there is, 
I think the, the, the biggest impact was on civil air, uh, aviation. So the military business is more or less stable. For sure, there are also some, yeah, some, some smaller impacts, but yeah, it's, it's a stable business. And maybe that's the winner of the, of the COVID-19, um, if we're talking about uh, volumes, right? So, or, or, yeah. Yeah, okay. And is there also a distinction, but you know, you talk about the, the large airlines, but there's also kind of business jets, right? They're the smaller jets rather than the big large airplanes we're used to seeing at the airports, right? Uh, is there any distinction between those? I mean, I'm assuming the tier ones serve both. Yeah, that, that's an interesting question. So uh, looking at the big ones, so the Airbus and Boeing, they, for sure, they have the, the major impact, but as the people want to fly, and if you have enough money, you have your private chat. So then you have the, the, the biz chat, and it means finally the biz chat is one option to have a more secured flight, so you can avoid the, the yeah all these infection mm -hmm. possibilities, and so yes the the, the the business jet is is not really impacted by the COVID, but, or let me say, not that much impacted. Okay. They have a better position. Right. <clears throat> so as we look, um, and you started talking about that already, as we look to the post-COVID kind of industry. Um, so, what, in your opinion, then, will is needed uh, in the aviation industry in the future? Still, you know, for it to to kind of so and thrive and develop? From my point of view, in the future, it will be necessary to, to find new options to, to do with the new situation, um, to find more creative ways in, in materials. You know, today, the, the avionic products, it's, it's a very complex product. Usually, it's really mostly old designs very long on the market and um, yeah, high complex for sure. Mm -hmm. But tomorrow I think we need solutions, more modular electronics, also new technologies, new, new possibilities to, to, yeah, to keep the competitiveness. So this, this I think is, is necessary in the aviation tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. And in terms of, um... Uh, that that the, the that product development side um, mm -hmm. it's indicated they're they're older designs they take a long time they stay in the market a long time um, but with with changes happening is is that needing to get faster is there a a, a, um, a a quicker maybe a more efficient way to do those or what's your opinion there. I think there is a need to do that. So I, I, to be honest, I don't see that today because uh, yeah, as I said, it's a very complex product with, with a lot of qualification necessary to get the approval for a let me say flying product. I think there, there is a change necessary. We need to find different ways to, to qualify on a, on a more efficient way, on a, on a faster way. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. to improve the products and, and, and to make it ready for the future. Gotcha. Now, and part of the future, and you spoke about it at the beginning, is the whole e-vehicle piece, so e-mobility, and that's certainly having an impact in, in, in this particular sector. So, so what can you expect in regards, or what can we expect in regards to kind of electric what is it called urban air mobility, I think is the term. How, how do we, and you talked about it, about the taxis, right? Um, what's happening in that area? Yeah, I think as, as I said, so the air, air taxis will be coming more and more, maybe not next year, but uh, it will be an important sector for the aerospace. But uh, from my point of view, uh, absolute different, different one because there are a lot of new players in the market. So it's not the, yeah, the, the existing aerospace companies. Usually it's, it's our very innovative startup companies with a lot of new ideas, uh, technology driven. 
very fast and uh, uh, that's basically how I see the, the, um, the air taxi business. They have a completely different style of working uh, in terms of engineering and all these things. And, and the question is how they come together with the, let's say, the conventional aerospace industry, because there is also the need to qualify them to, to make them ready to get the official approvals from the government and all these kind of things. And, and this will be challenging for the next years because they have for sure a lot of ideas, a lot of know-how in, in terms of technology. Um, but I think they, it's important also to have some, some support to get it certified, to get the approvals, to, yeah. you know, to have a manufacturing possibility um, with, the, with the AS9000 bundle, for example, mm -hmm. to, yeah, to be ready to have a flying product. Mm -hmm. and I think that will be different if we talk about the, the electric uh, vehicles or the, the air mobility, uh, a taxi, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And, and many of us wonder too, kind of what that's going to look like in a city, right? There has to be regulations, you know, you envision something kind of flying around between the buildings and you think, oh my gosh, you know, that being regulated, right? And isn't there danger or risk associated with it? So. I think this is also a big question to be, to be solved, right? So because yeah. there is a lot of restrictions, there are a lot of regulations and yeah. Uh, this will happen. So it's not only a question of the industry, but also from the yeah, from the FAA, for example, for for regulatory things. Yeah. But I'm pretty yeah. sure that it will be that will be one of the the future possibilities if you want to have a you know, for short distances like uh, like today with a taxi. If you're looking on the crowded cities, I think it's a good option. Yeah, and in some ways, I guess, from a regulatory side, it's being addressed with drones being so common, right? There's already restrictions on drones and how high, where they can fly, do not fly. So in some way, that that process has begun. But it's, maybe it's not that fast enough, right? So. Yeah, okay. Well, let's talk about bringing it to the EMS then. So again, um, so how can an aerospace company then, uh, or doing work in this, uh, uh, benefit, what are the benefits that they derive from engaging with an EMS company, such as, you know, you, what do they get out of it? Yeah, well, I think an EMS company is, is always a possibility if you want to have flexibility. If you want to have, a, or if you're looking for a scalable production, if you have the need for new technologies and all these kind of things. Mm -hmm. If you're looking to the, to the aerospace manufacturer, most of them have their own in-house production or a lot of them, sure. And uh, mm -hmm. maybe there is a, is, a, is a good benefit for them if, if they have something like an EMS, which is have high loads and, and let's say a high workload in the machines to have really efficient mm -hmm. um, yeah, coverage of the of the machines with new technologies to to bring down the manufacturing costs. Mm. Also, I think it's it's good to have the the, the EMS for for the in, in that field because usually you have a, you have more footprints in a, as an EMS company. You can be there where it, it's necessary to be, and and also you are not. How should I say? Most of the EMS do not have just one branch to be served. So they are working in different uh, areas like uh, the industry, the aer aer uh, aerospace, automotive, or the medical, mm -hmm. like we are doing. And, and this is also for the risk mitigation. I think it's a very important topic. Mm -hmm. um, and this will become more and more important, I think, because if we, unfortunately, if we look to the supply chain in the aerospace industry, there are a lot of really good companies, really experts in that field, but maybe they, they have big issues to survive that big crisis. And this yeah. is a big problem for the whole industry. And so an EMS with his, uh, yeah, with his broad range of products can, can support that risk mitigation as well. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, 
And then there has to be, I mean, an EMS also is potentially is building stuff for other competitors potentially. So the, their, the knowledge base within the EMS in a particular sector, in my opinion, has always been one of the, one of the benefits that they bring to their customers, right? They see a lot, they have experience in others and they can bring that collective wisdom into yeah. what the project they're yeah. doing. I agree. Yes, for sure. That's that's also an important point. If we talk about industrialization, for example, so we have for sure experts in development in the whole field of aerospace, but but an EMS can support the manufacturing ideas because they usually are experts in manufacturing and supply chain, and uh, this could be really good benefit for the, the for the two ones. That way to have really close cooperation already in, in the very early stage, not only for manufacturing but also for the yeah for the industrialization phase, in order to find the right partners to find the right manufacturing processes and make it at the end of the day very competitive. So I think this is a good benefit that EMS can bring in. Right, and and you had said too that uh, you know some of the larger OEMs, right, uh, as you engage with the two. Um, maybe have their own internal manufacturing as well. But you also talked about when we talked about the e-vehicles, um, <clears throat> the newer, the quicker companies who so they may not have that. So right. are they more inclined to, to, to in, in, involve an EMS company? Yes, sure. I think it makes sense that they, they involve an EMS company because they, as you said, they have usually no manufacturing possibility, they, they are purely driven on development, purely technology experts. And it's, I think here it's more and more important to, to know about the manufacturing possibilities to, to really design the right product for, or so to, in terms of manufacturability, right? So EF, EFX, it's the keyword for that. Um, that's really a benefit for them and also I think from the, how should I say, if we talk about these, all these air taxi things, mm -hmm. at the, today we, we are talking about experimental phase, so really low volumes, maybe one or two or three, but tomorrow maybe they need thousands of them and, and you need a scalable production. And this is something that EMS can, can bring in as well. Yeah. Because there is a lot of production capacity available and you can do it, yeah, you, you can scale it somehow. Right, right. No, that is an important piece. You're absolutely right. You know, if they're planning for success, they need a partner who can grow with them and do so quickly, right? And, and that's always been a benefit, I think, that EMS brings to the table. So, so tell me, so ex, I mean, what is the extent of Zollner's capabilities in this area? From you know, what are the services that you provide, and what are your capabilities in the in the aerospace then? Well, okay, Solner, yeah, as, as the company Solner, we are, as you said, we are on, on for a long time already in the, in the aerospace industry. It's now more than 15 years. Um, we started with the first product. Um, benefit of Solner, I think we have a lot of experience in, this, in that field, and this is very important if you want to talk to the people at, home, at, at the same level, at the same yeah. highest level, I would say. Mm. That's very important. So we have a lot of engineers, a lot of experts talking the, the aerospace voice uh, mm -hmm. language. Let me say it in this way, that's, that's important to, to have the same understanding. Um, but also we have, uh, we have different other branches where, where also some ideas and this is something we can bring together. For example, e-mobility is also a, a, an important thing for us. Automotive is, is, is working on a lot of e-mobility products, so this is something we can bring in as well to the, uh, to the aerospace industry because the product itself is not, not completely different. The technology is not completely different, but the usage is different. You need to understand how the aerospace world is, is working. Mm -hmm. And this is something we, we can bring in as, as Zona because we have knowledge in, in, in a lot of different fields um, of the industry. Mm -hmm. Also, I think what's important for, for our customer, we have a global footprint, not only for industrial electronics, but also for the, the aerospace industry. 
we started 15 years ago in, in Germany with the first uh, production centers certified to the aerospace. And today we have it more or less in all the main regions. Like uh, in Europe, we have Germany for sure, our excellent center for aerospace, but we have also the best cost option in Romania in order to support all this cost competitiveness mm -hmm. in, in that field, doing also more than five years already products for the civil aircraft, uh, aerospace. Then we are certified in, in Costa Rica as a, as a best cost option for an American region, let me say, so it's also a good fit for our customers, as well as in China. So this year we, we get certified in, 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 in Taishan in our uh, Chinese plant. So it means we, we are ready on more or less all the main regions in the world to, yeah, to support our customers locally. Um, yeah, for sure the machinery, our technology is state of the art. So this is not nothing uh, for uh, nothing old. So this is state of the art machinery. And important is we, we do have it all over the world. So for sure, for example, we could start in Germany and the same machinery would be in Costa Rica or in, 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 uh, okay. in China as well. So it's easy to transfer and we can support that. Okay. So this is just a, a few words out of that. Also yeah. important, I think we are, we are, we are not, a, not the biggest EMS player, but we are big enough to have a financial stability. We are independent, we, yeah. we are family owned, as you said. And mm -hmm. I think this is also important in that time to have a partner with a, with a good stability, financially talking, and also long-term oriented, we are not, driven by, by quarterly calls. We, we have a long-term strategy, basically five years, and uh, we can in that way also very fast decide how to do and, and talking about investments, it's, I think it's, it's more, more easy to do that because we are thinking on the long run and we want to work and grow together with our customers. And yeah. I think that's important. In that yeah. <clears throat> good, good, good. And so you're talking about the current capabilities. One of the challenges I always think that an EMS industry or companies have is just kind of um, keep evolving and staying ahead of the technology curve for their benefit of their customers, right? So they're, so if we look to the future then, and, and as you're moving forward, um, what could we expect then from, from a zona in terms of continual development uh, to service this particular sector? Well, so today we, for sure, the, the situation is we have, I, I would say, 60 to 70 percent of the business is, is built to print. So the, the customers are looking for contract manufacturers having existing products uh, with, with a clear bill of material, with, with clear requirements in terms of material, also in processes. And I think this will change. And the customer are expecting more and more to be a partner in, in the industrialization phase and also sharing risks and, um, yeah, and have a, a close cooperation to define the process, not only to use that, but also to, to support the definition already um, during the whole life cycle. Uh, not, not the pure uh, manufacturer of the products, but also the partner of the life cycle it means industrialization phase maybe somehow in the development, but also in the after-sales service, where are different requirements. So we have done a lot of different materials. Obsolescence management is a big, big part of the game. So how to deal with obsolete components. We have already some solutions to store that for a long period of time in order to, yeah, to secure the, the supply chain for the next 20 or 25 years. And also to yeah to be there where they 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 want us to be. So not only on one location. Um, maybe we can start in Germany. Yes, for sure. Maybe it makes sense in the very beginning of the life cycle because it's it's good to support them in the NPI phase. A lot of exports, but when it comes to the to the more volume production, maybe it's necessary to go to Romania if you talk about Romania, uh, Europe or to, to China or, or even to Costa Rica. So that's the, the things 
the customers are expecting from us maybe tomorrow or already today, let me say it this way. And also the material portion will be more and more important. Um, I think customers are expecting alternative components. So we need to be ready to find alternatives. So the, the existing bill of material is for sure important, but um, what can we as Zone do to find alternatives with the same quality, but maybe with a better fit in terms of supply chain or, mm -hmm. or prices or whatever. So that, that, that's basically that what I think is, is important for the future. And um, yeah, also maybe product validations will be one of the one of the, the, the things we could support, right? So today they have the development phase in their own production. And, and mostly they produce the products by their own in the very beginning. But tomorrow I think they, they will will need some uh, somebody to, to support also the validation phase. And, and mm. this is something someone who can uh, support as well. Okay, excellent. Yeah, no, EMS, are, it, it's, it's always a challenging business model and EMS has to continually evolve and stay ahead. And there's, you know, a lot of demands and changes and I'll, not just coming out of the COVID pandemic, but clearly the industry over the last many decades has had to evolve and change with the technology and stay ahead of it for the benefit of customers. So, um, so this has been very good. This gives, I think, I want to thank you for, you know, we're coming to the end of our time here um, for taking the time to share with us because this is, I knew that this, you know, just because I, I live by an airport, I see fewer planes in the air, right? I'm well aware of not many today, right? So. <laughs> yeah, there's not many at all. So, I mean, it's picking up. I'm right by the Dallas Fort Worth airport and, um, but still, it's uh, the impact is dramatic, right? And uh, but yet, it's still an important sector for the industry. It's an important sector for the world, really. And, uh, you know, business travel will come back in some form, right? Um, at uh, in the future, and this is clearly the platform that is needed for that. So, um, so Martin, thank you for taking the time today to to share with us these thoughts. I uh, Hopefully we can revisit this again in the future because, you know, the news is ever changing and I'll certainly be be, be watching Zona and what you're doing in that regard um, over the next few years. So again, thank you for your time today. Thank you for sharing your, your, your insights and your thoughts with our audience. I certainly appreciate that. And thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for your time and giving me the chance to, to talk to you. Was a pleasure. Absolutely. And as we say here in Texas, you know, danke schön. And uh, we appreciate it. <laughs> and, I wish, <laughs> and I wish you happy holidays. Sir.